Hi, my name is Oren Bustila, and today I'm going to show you an introduction to CMake, a cross-platform build system generator. What is CMake? CMake is a cross-platform build system designed to generate native build environments for Windows, Unix, Linux, and Mac. Note that, note that I have emphasized the word generate, as CMake by itself does not build systems. Rather, CMake generates native build environments like Visual Studio and make files on Unix. It is part of a family of tools designed to build, test, and package software. For more information, please visit CMake website. CMake is widely used in large projects, so feel free and safe using it. CMake support provides online and offline documentation. You can visit Wikipedia or register to the mailing list, which is quite responsive and very helpful. You can also get paid support by pouching books or by contacting Kitware for standard or light support. What does CMake do? CMake generates native build workspaces. Available build environments are Unix, Windows, and Mac. Important note, you cannot manually change the native build files, as they will be overwritten by CMake. Hence, you will have to learn CMake. Don't panic, CMake is easy and powerful. An example, let's say we want to add files to our native environment, an H or a CPP. If we change our Visual Studio project and add the files there, the next time we run CMake, our changes will be lost. Therefore, apply all your changes only to the CMake project. CMake basic concepts A directory is equal to a project. Each directory is a project. Subdirectories are subprojects. On the left side, we can see a typical hierarchy of a project, where we have demo as the root, our include files, our static libs, dynamic and shared libraries, and executables. Note that the include folder is not really a project, as it is not producing binaries. CMake provides four predefined targets. Each project can produce only four targets. Debug for debugging and development, release, release with symbols, and release optimize. You can have any set of optimizations associated with this target. Project inheritance. Each child project inherits its parent project configuration. This produces coherent binaries. There are no runtime conflicts. It also provides us with centralized control, where we can basically define a directive at the demo level, and it will affect our entire project. Source tree and binary tree concepts. The source tree contains our source files, and the CMake list files, basically the CMake project. And only that, the binary tree contains our native build system files like DSW, DSPs, SLNs, etc. Libraries, executable, build outputs, and any other build generated files. The benefits of using source tree and binary trees. It provides us with fast workspace cleanup. You only need to delete the binary tree or your build directory. No special scripts needed to distinguish your H, CPP, and your object files. It also provides us with system variants, where a single source tree can produce many binary trees. By running CMake with different binary tree as the root folder, you can create new variant and keep the ones you already have. A good example is if you have one source and you want to produce both VC6, VC2005 and 2008 projects at the same time. CMake scripting. I'm just going to go through the basics. The bars is set for comments. CMakeList.txt is the main project entry script. It is unique per project or folder. You can still include other scripts by calling include. You can use variables. 
you can set a variable. In this example, we've declared the variable name x66, and you can read variables. In this example, we are reading the value of the variable x66. You can use if, else, and end if sections. This is an example of um, Windows 32 um, section. You can also use your variables in these sections. Let's look at the root folder cmakelist.txt file. Note the first line, which describes the minimum version for CMake. You must declare this line at the first at the root cmakelist.txt. Otherwise, CMake will generate an error. The next thing we'll, we've done is to declare the name of the project. Now, in this case, it is demo. Here is some version information. Here we've declared a, a directive named DevRed1. This directive will be available across the project. The reason is, we've added this definition at the demo level, which is the root folder. Here we've uh, specified our include directories. You can specify more than one by using spaces. Here we've specified our link directories. And the same, you can specify more than one by using spaces. You can call message if you want to print to the CMake output. In this case, I find printing the binary directory uh, helpful. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to tell CMake what other subdirectories we would like to process. In our case, it is our libsrc, PLLs, and executables. Let's take a look at one of our DLLs, uh, cmakelist.txt. You can see there is no minimum CMake, uh, CMake version required, as we already defined it in the root cmakelist.txt. The project name is DLL1. Here we have created uh, two variables. Uh, we use the built-in uh, variable project name, which basically represents DLL1 and we've created a new variable named dll dll one un underscore headers and the list of headers. Here, we've set the list of sources. It is a library, and therefore we call add library with a project name, and we specify whether it's static or shared. Then, we specify our source files. In this case, dll one is linking with lib1. Therefore, we call target underscore link libraries. Install. Using this command, we specify where we, we would like to install our binaries. Runtime stands for executables, and they will be installed under bin. Libraries, which stands for dynamic or shared libraries, like SO and DLL, will be installed under lib. Archive stands for our static libraries. Let's look at another example, our exe1 executable. Same, provide with the project name, two variables representing the headers and sources. Here, we call add executable and provide it with the project name, headers and sources. In this case, exe1 is linking with dll1. And the same, we provide where to in the install information. Summary. CMake is very powerful. It is cross-platform, it using, uses inheritance, it uses co co produces coherent binaries, and it provides us with centralized control. Also, it uses automatic build order and single source tree to many binary tree. Learning CMake, it, learning CMake is, learning a new thing is a pain in the neck. Learning something good makes it easier. It's a simple scripting language with many defaults. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed and I hope it will be helpful. See you on the next video. Bye bye.